What is up, everybody? Welcome back to another video. In today's video, we are here with a lot of lion stuff to dive into. Today, we're going to be talking about this Lions offense and some of the most recent roster moves that the Lions have made. Man, we back. And no, y'all see the lights. Hold up. Oh, that, oh this light's falling off. Y'all see the lights. Oh, yeah, we, we updated. We improved around here. This looks good. You know, it's the second half of the season. I felt like we needed a spark. So literally a spark. Get it? Because so let's get it started. We're going to bite a kneecap off and we're going to stand up and then it's going to take two more shots to knock us down. And on the way up, we're going to take your other kneecap and we're going to get up and then it's going to take three shots to get us down. And when we do, we're going to take another hunk out of you before before long. We're the, going to be the last one standing. And welcome everybody to the video. I'm glad you guys are here. And I just want to say, first off, thank you to everybody. Uh, I know I put it out in the community. We did not have a show on Monday. We didn't do anything on Monday. And I put it out there, I wasn't feeling very well. I wasn't feeling that good Monday. And this, this view would be trash. And I was like, I don't want to just rush something out there. So we held off on Monday. So shout out to everyone for being understanding. Appreciate you guys. But we're back today to talk about some stuff. Uh, man, I'm just, I'm just happy to be back to it, all right? I'm happy, I'm feeling good, and I'm ready to dive into all this Lions talk. But again, shout out to you guys, I appreciate it. I know we didn't do anything for the bye week game either. I was, that's really when I started feeling like whack a Sunday. You know, I was like sitting there and I was like, man, I'm, I can't, I have to like sit in a weird angle to feel okay. I'm like, it's gonna be hard to do anything on Sunday. So that day I was like, oh, it's a bye week, we'll just let it roll. And then Monday it was even worse. I'm like, okay, this is not good. So today we're back, we're better. And I do appreciate all of you guys for sticking around because today we got some big things to dive into. The Lions have made a lot of roster moves. We're coming off of the bye week now. And we also are going to talk about some offensive adjustments. It looks like the Lions are going to make heading out of the bye, which could be pretty exciting. At very least, it's, it's going to be different, which is, I guess that's exciting because when you're 0-8, and of your first eight games, four of those games, you didn't score in the first half. Yeah, you got to change something up. Something has to be different. And the Lions didn't go out and go sign or trade for anybody. So something has to change schematically. And it sounds like that's going to happen. Now, I can't tell you exactly what's going to happen. But I can give you some ideas from what we've seen this season. What we've seen in Anthony Lynn in the past. And really what the Lions are working with in this unit. Plus from what we heard from St. Brown and from Dan Campbell on Monday. Our plan to be back on Thursday for a last second dose. I know Monday we didn't have the show. Rad was unable to make it as well. So we just canceled the show on Monday. But we are planning to be back on Thursday. And I'm thinking about possibly putting up kind of like a mailbox. You know how we used to do that where I put the que ask for questions that you put in the community. And then we'll just kind of roll through those in the show. I think that might be a segment for Thursday. So stay tuned for that. There could be a thing in the community section that says, hey, give me some questions if you got some that you want answered in that show. And that way, if you can't even make the show, we can go through your question. And then, of course, if you want to watch it back, you can see our answer to that question. So I think we may do that. We may do a little mailbox. It's been a minute, but I like this. I'm excited coming out of the bye. You know, it's a new season, as Dan Campbell put it. This is a fresh start for us Lions fans, but also for the team. Like, we can just put the first half behind us, just move on. This was exciting heading into the year when I looked at where the bye week was. I'm like, oh, it's great to have it in the middle of the season like this. I mean, it's right in the middle. It splits the season right in half. Obviously, 0-8 is not good. But it's just a time for a fresh start. That's really what this is. And that's what we need. And hopefully the Lions continue because I gave you guys a trivia question on Saturday. And I'll give it to you now and I'll answer it at the end. Let me write this down. That way I don't forget. What is the Detroit Lions record in the last 10 years coming out of the bye week? All right. So I'll give you guys that answer at the end of the video. Put it down in the comment section below now. But don't cheat. Don't, don't look that up. Don't look it up and then be like, oh, I got it right. Now you ain't get it right. And don't wait till the end and then comment. And be like, oh, I knew it was that all along. And now you did it. No, you did not. You commented that right now. All right, let's dive into this thing. Let's talk about some of these recent roster moves that the Lions have made. Lions roster moves. We actually have a couple of maybe bigger roster moves that the Lions made. Nothing crazy here, but it also may play into what the Lions could be doing going forward again offensively. And that's really what we're going to talk about after we go through these offensive moves. I gave you guys the update last night. Well, yeah, last night I put it in the community section that the Detroit Lions waived Darren Fells. This was something, and I'm assuming it was because he was a healthy scratch in our last game against the Philadelphia Eagles. And he was like, okay, I'm kind of losing playing time here. I'm not really playing anymore. Brock Wright is someone they clearly like. So, you know, why sit here and just not play? Like, like I'm a veteran, and I know he wants to play for a team that needs a tight end help, right? So he has been waived by the Lions. I don't know. I haven't kept that out. I don't know if he's going to picked up or who picks him up, but I hope he does get picked up. But he has been waived per his request. Request. I guess it's not a huge surprise there because he kind of just lost his role. You kind of hate to see it, but at the same time, it's also exciting because the Lions clearly like Brock Wright, and uh, he could have a bright future with us as our number two tight end. It's a little bit more of a surprise, and this is that the Detroit Lions have waived receiver Tom Kennedy. Okay, this is 
is sort of a big one. So Tom Kenny was a receiver that actually made the initial 53-man roster. We saw him in the preseason, played pretty well in every single preseason game they had him in. Not sure he wasn't out there with the starters, but he played pretty well in pretty much every preseason game. So they kept him over guys like Brashad Pyramid on the 53-man roster as the sixth receiver, I believe, at the time. We haven't seen him a ton this season, but because of injuries, he slid up and he's had a little bit of a roll. But he's only had one reception so far, and it was kind of in like a garbage time against the Cincinnati Bengals where he got a little underneath route. Really just haven't seen him that involved offensively. Again, I don't think we would have saw a big role for Tom Kennedy going forward this season. Even though he played really well in the preseason, a shot to Tom Kennedy, I was super excited for him. You know, it was great to see him get a shot. But I just didn't know how much of a role he'd really have. And I still predicted a guy like Perriman to get the job just because some of the ability that he had over a guy like Tom Kennedy. But at the same time, I do respect Tom Kennedy for, you know, making this roster and the Lions giving him a shot because he did play well in the preseason. But now the Detroit Lions have waived him. He is no longer on the 53-man roster. Now, he could, of course, land back on the practice squad at some point. I think it's very possible if no one picks him up. We'll see how that goes. So I think he definitely could land back on the practice squad. Kennedy has been waived. And I think that actually is something you should keep in mind because when he started talking about how this offense could look a little bit different in the second half of the season, at least coming out this first week of the bye week, that may be part of it. A guy that has been promoted from the practice squad is safety Jalen Elliott. I like Jalen Elliott. I like this guy back in the preseason, and we've seen him a little bit play playing defensively. And now he has been promoted from the practice squad to the active 53-man roster. So Jalen Elliott is here, and he's got a spot, as well as Brock Wright. I don't know if I said that earlier, but Brock Wright also has a spot. So those two guys out, those two guys in. You don't have to worry about, oh, how many times have they been elevated? Oh, it's two times. They can't be elevated anymore. Now they got to be brought to the 53-man roster. So this opens up spots for these two players, which have played a little bit for the Lions. Uh, Brock Wright, of course, the last couple of weeks. So we were going to have to do this if we wanted to keep letting him play. And since he released fells, it just made sense. And of course, Jalen Elliott, who's played more in kind of like garbage time near end of games. But he is a player the Lions clearly like at that safety position. So they put him on the 53-man roster with the spot open from their receiver, Tom Kennedy, being waived. Now let's move over to some of these practice squad moves because the Lions have signed two players to their practice squad filling out the two guys that were elevated from the practice squad. Place the Lions have signed first off tight end Nick Eubanks. Oh snap, hey, that name sounds familiar. I know it does because Nick Eubanks was a Michigan Wolverine. Yeah, another tight end here. It makes sense just for depth purposes to have another tight end since you lost Aaron Fells. Player that definitely has some ability, that's for sure, with Michigan. He never really became the huge threat that possibly they thought he could be in that Josh Gaddis offense. So, I mean, we talked about it. Guys like Nico Collins, for example, maybe he didn't have as many targets as he probably should have because of his talent level. But Nick Eubanks was one of those guys that didn't always come up with contested grabs, but he's a pretty good athlete. You know, ran a four, sub 4-6 four, 40, just barely a four five nine forty. He has a pretty solid vertical. He's six foot five, two hundred and you know forty five pounds. So he's got some good size. And his probably best ability is the fact that he could play motion, play some H back roll, possibly line up like a fullback, get one on ones with linebackers, and then become a mismatch in those places. And of course, that's usually the mismatch with tight ends. But for him, he's a little bit on the more athletic side for a tight end. So he has some ability there. The season did come in two thousand nineteen when he had twenty five receptions and he had four touchdowns that year. The year before. Four. He's more of a deep threat. Wasn't a super dominant blocker. Possibly could become a mismatch for defenders. Maybe he still has some upside to be more of a, a deep ball threat. Certain things that got to be really crisp. And that's pass catching consistently, making catches in contested situations, especially when you're playing a lot over the middle. And then blocking. I mean, that's a big one. He hasn't been like a dominant blocker either. So, you know, we'll see. I mean, no one's really guaranteed a spot once they're on the practice squad. But it's just more competition at the tight end position with a guy that has some ability. He's flashed from time to time with Michigan. And Michigan's done... I I thought they've done a pretty good job of developing some tight end. Good tight end. A lot of times, I mean, Michigan will find you. So I think that's that's the uplifting, you know, idea. I think he first landed with the Dallas Cowboys. Also have signed a receiver to their practice squad. This is a weird one. Travis here. He started actually coming out of high school as a four-star quarterback recruit. Okay, interesting. And then he ultimately moved to receiver at Montana State. I believe he started with Oregon and transferred to Montana State. But the guy has done a lot of different things. He wasn't just a straight-up receiver. It's still probably an area that he's developing. But he definitely has size. Six foot four, two hundred eleven. Pounds, so he's definitely got size out there. But like I said, he's got that quarterback background. So at Montana State, they would get a lot of direct snaps. They let him run with it. 
there's a lot of ability here. It's just that he's pretty raw when they talk about playing the receiver position. That's for sure. He didn't have any like huge games. Statistically, there wasn't any huge numbers, but he also had a lot of rushing numbers as well because he can run the ball. What I like about him is he definitely has that run after catch ability. You know, that's that's one thing that sticks out to you right away is he can make guys miss in open space. He can break some tackles. Of course, the size is something that you love, especially when you look at our receiver. You're like, yeah, we're kind of small. He could have went a little bit under radar because the statistics weren't there. So that actually could be potentially a benefit for us for a young guy that that's definitely still developing to be a receiver, assuming that's what he is for the Lions. I'm assuming that's what he's going to be for the Lions. His biggest strength in his mind is that he's able to recover really well. Playing that quarterback position, he knows where the holes are in zones. He knows to, how to attack a defense. So we'll see him running across the field in man coverage and then his zone coverage, he'll sit down. He won't continue to run and put himself in a bad spot. He'll make himself a big target for a quarterback. I think there's a lot to like there. He's just very unpolished, right? Just not a lot of time at this position. So this is an interesting signing, but he definitely has certain things you can't teach. That's six foot four, 210 pounds, and the ability to make guys miss what the ball is in your hands, and just an athlete. Simple as that. So, interesting addition here, that's for sure. We'll see how the Lions utilize him, and we'll see if we get any updates about him, but that's one that definitely caught my eye. I don't even know how to pronounce the guy's last name, all right? Johnson? I, I don't know. We'll, maybe we'll learn soon. Johnson? I, hey, Johnson. Yeah, actually, it actually might do Johnson because Johnson. It might be Johnson. That's a cool way to spell Johnson. Shout out to my man, Trev. A couple of quick final notes for the Detroit Lions roster here. The Lions have placed receiver Javon McKinley on practice squad injured. You do hate to hear that for Javon McKinley. And finally, quarterback Tim Boyle. His clock has started on Monday. He has that 21-day period where he will have to return to the active roster. So the Lions would have to make a spot if that is the case, but he is returning now to practice. So that 21 day period has begun. If he does not return to this active roster and the Detroit Lions elevate him to the active roster after this 21 day period of returning to practice, he will be out for the season. So I would say that's pretty good news there for Tim Boyle as the competition now begins kind of again for the backup quarterback position. All right, now let's talk about this Lions offense a little bit. We know about the Lions offensive struggles. I'm not going to sit here and read through statistics of how bad the Lions offense has been in this first half of the season. We all know it. You can see with the eye test. It's just been bad. It's it's simple. It's been bad. The only statistic I got to use is that four of our eight games, we did not score in the first half. That's bad. Okay, that should not be a stat in the NFL today. I think it's just over 16 points per game. It's just not good. So the Lions had to make some changes. They don't go out to trade for somebody. They didn't go sign anybody in this bye week. They may have gotten a big addition back, possibly, when you talk about the injury front. We'll get into that. But we know some schematic things had to change. Some schematic things had to be changed up going into the second half of the season to try to figure out how do we find any kind of spark offensively. They're coming off again against Philadelphia, where... Aaron Glenn, you know, the defense, they decided to bury the game film. It was just bad. I mean, Dan Campbell called it the bad news bears. Oh. You're watching guys run over each other, stepping on each other's feet, blocking all goofy. I mean, it's just, it was just ugly. For every single stage of the game, running the ball, passing the ball, it was just ugly. Penalties reared its ugly head. I, I don't know where that came from, but I'm going to use it here. I never, I don't think ever in my life have used that before, but I'm going to use it here. Reared its ugly head. It was just not good. So the Lions had to make some changes. And listening to Dan Campbell speak about the Lions offense this week, one thing he brought up in particular that they want to try to be able to do is get these receivers more involved. He wants to get more players involved offensively. I think we all hear that. We're like, oh, yeah, we do, because it's just been kind of the TJ Hawkinson show. And then, of course, Swift gets involved in all these checkdowns. And that's kind of our offense in the passing game. Like, we've said it many times the last second dose. Every single week, really, since Cephas has went down, and we'll get into that, the receiver production has been one guy. It's been maybe Khalif State. Maybe it's St. Brown, but that's it. It's one receiver every week, and that's the only guy that usually catches passes. There's really no other kind of production from the other receiver position. That's not all on the receiver. It's not all on the passing attack. It's not all on the quarterback. It's not all on the play calling. It's kind of a mix of all of it. Some of it is the play calling that we're throwing out there is not really to try to get these guys involved. We're just kind of setting it up to not get these guys involved because we're trying to play to our strengths. Something that Dan Campbell specifically brought up is that with his receivers, he wants to make sure he gets more players involved in the second half. He wants to take more shots in one-on-one -on -one coverage. It's trusting your guys in one-on-one, -on -one, right? Whatever maybe, even if we got to kind of force it to him. And that's the play design is to go to this guy and then just trust your guy to simply win their one-on-one -on -one matchup. Okay? Okay, that's what we will see more. Now, we also got to listen to Amon Ross St. Brown. And St. Brown told us that the coaching staff has reached out to him and they talked about him playing more Z receiver. And as we know, the X receiver is the guy that's on the line on the outside. It's the guy that I thought Perriman was going to be this season. And the Z receiver is another outside receiver that can play in motion, right? He's not on the line, so he can move around. They can slide in, they can bounce out, they can move around the field. They're the Z receiver. And then you have your slot receiver. 
He apparently has talked to the coaching staff about playing more Z receiver going forward, playing more on the outside as Amon Ross St. Brown has put it. Now, up to this point, he's been pretty much strictly a slot receiver. Most of his snaps, I see about 80% of his snaps have come from the slot receiver position. I do have the statistics of it, but I, I can't find it for some reason. Like 269 to like 40 snaps has been in the slot for him right now. So he's just mainly, mainly playing in the slot, which isn't a huge surprise considering coming out of college, like that's what he was best at. When you saw, what does St. Brown do best? Well, you put him in a slot and he's scary. You know, he has their problems trying to match with this guy in the slot. And we've, we've seen some good games from St. Brown. I would say specifically in his last game against the Eagles, he showed up and he helped us, right? He was making some nice plays after the ball was in his hands, fighting for first downs. He's a guy that golf can trust. There's a good relationship building there. We're starting to see that, okay, we like St. Brown, right? But he's at that slot position. And now he's talking about possibly playing more on the outside. Now, it's not completely new to him. It's not like, oh, my goodness, playing the outside. I've never even tried that in my life. Like, nah, he did it at USC. They trained him a little bit more on the outside, actually, latter part of his career with USC, later towards the end. And it wasn't like he was bad. He just wasn't as dominant as he was from the slot position. But he still could play at outside receiver. And now they're talking about playing him more at the outside. Well, why is that? And what does that mean for this offense? We've talked about this for a while. And the one thing that I say is, man, we, we just got to learn. Nothing to lose, but you have to learn how to win games and how to find success offensively. And I look back at this first half of the season, kind of had this bye week like the Lions coaches to just take a peek back at this first half of the season and just look at kind of the ups and downs, specifically of this offense. And one thing that I really noticed was just the impact of that outside receiver position, really since Quintes, Quintes Cephas has went down. I look back at this offense and the early part of the season, really first four weeks, first four and a half weeks, went to that Minnesota game where we kind of struggled a little bit, especially once Cephas went down in that game. But I thought we did find some success in the first four weeks of the season, moving the ball down the field. You look at the Baltimore game, we scored every time. I think we had the ball in the second half. The first half was not very good. Obviously, Sam Franny dropped 33 points. I thought we found some success in the first four weeks. One big issue for us was capitalizing in the red zone we've still seen that as an issue but definitely there right we had the messed up snap against the bears we only scored 14 points but multiple times we were stuffed in the red zone he did find i thought a little bit more stability moving the ball in those games and one thing i think is a big part of that is having the threats on the outside specifically a guy like quintess cephas Earl williams go down who was supposed to be the top guy and cephas kind of became that guy we saw it in the first game that he really came in as the top guy and that was green bay when he made some huge plays especially off schedule and we saw that after that week right you go to green bay you saw the off schedule huge play to start the game then he catches the touchdown then he moved to the next week where you have the off schedule well, not the next week but then he moved to the bears game where you have the off schedule big play they have there as well there was that trust factor and there was that guy that they could trust to win those one-on-one -on -one opportunities on the outside, which led to bigger chunk plays that we really haven't seen since that time. You know, here's an example. This is Goff's stat line from week one to week four versus week five to week eight. Okay, this is the stat line of Tyrell slash Quintus Cephas, mainly Quintus Cephas and no Quintus Cephas since we've seen the schematic changes. Taylor Decker was not here through any of this. Ragnar was here through pretty much these first four weeks. But you can just see the statistical differences. I mean, look at it. Golf was putting up these numbers on the left through the first four weeks of the season. 97 pass ready, which went a 14th in a league. That's above average. Seven touchdowns to two picks, 7.19. Now look at that's changed schematically with the personnel they have. Look how much that has changed since that time, all right? 73.2 pass rating, that's awful. Five adjusted yards per attempt, awful, super low. One touchdown to four picks. Now the bottom stuff is what we did early in the year when we were taking a look at that. But this is my point. This, and I, I just put that down there just so I don't lose it. But this is my point. All right, this is what I'm telling you. This is what the Lions have to be looking at saying, oh my goodness, oh my goodness, do we need to make a change? And this could help big time. You want shots? Look at the shot differential. All right, you want production? Look at the production. You want passer rating? Look at the passer rating. It could even help a guy like Khalif. Now, not every week will you consistently have the same guys getting the same numbers, but we saw Khalif getting open from the slot a little bit. And Khalif has had, you know, his games since then. But just having that mix of Khalif Raymond on the outside, then having Cephas on the outside, and it was able to kind of lock St. Brown into that slot role. Well, then Quintez Cephas went down. You gotta remember, this is all happening without Taylor Decker. Then Quintez Cephas went down. And of course, Frank, Frank Ragnar also went down, which was a tough loss, but I thought Evan Brown's been playing solid. So once Quintez Cephas went down in that Minnesota Vikings game where we started to really scramble at that outside receiver position, I think also think we saw started to see a shift offensively in how Lions were trying to do things schematically. So you start with kind of the scramble, and that's where the Lions were at that receiver position. You had to, you were going to have a guy in Cephas who Jared Goff had a lot of trust in. He trusted him to get open, and Cephas was making plays. I mean, 
mean, he was off to a really nice start this season. In the first four weeks, four and you know, four and a, four weeks and a couple of quarters, actually a couple of times, the guy that had the most snaps out of every receiver in that position. But after he went down in that Vikings game, right after the big slant that got us the first down, who do we go to on third along? Cephas. He caught it, make got make got missed, and got the first down. There was a trust factor there, and even though our production still wasn't great because there was no Taylor Decker during this time. There was that outside receiver that we could trust opposite of Khalif Rain, which allowed St. Brown to play slot to win his one-on-one. -on -one. And it kept defenses a little more honest, which helped open up a run game that maybe we got away from a little bit too early. And I think turnovers also led to an issue for us. But it opened up the run game as well because we were able to get it to these outside receivers and open different things up. Once he went down, we started scrambling. We started off with the Kadero Hodge that plays in that Minnesota game, but we started mixing. You know, we started going to Trendy Benson, right? A guy that we traded for at the beginning of the season, which really didn't see the field up until this point. We're mixing in Kadero Hodge. Heck, we've even seen a little bit of Jerron Allison. Then you get a guy like Kennedy mixing in. And really, since Quintus Cephas has went down, we have not found a receiver that would provide us that trust at the outside receiver position for Jared Goff and also for this offensive game plan. Really, after that Minnesota Vikings game, we saw the Lions kind of in scramble mode a little bit with that position. I mean, we saw Benson, when we went to him, sometimes he just wasn't getting open, right? He was slipping on routes. His blocking, of course, hasn't been that good. Now, yes, we've played in the last couple of weeks, but we'll talk about the scheme in a second. It really hasn't been like design passes his way, so we'll get to that. Uh, we've seen Kadero Hodge. He made a couple plays in that Minnesota game, but then you see like most recently against Philadelphia, the one shot that we do get to him over middle field, he drops it, then he drops a touchdown later. It wouldn't have you know been a huge difference because the game was basically over, but it's still a drop pass, and he hasn't blocked extremely well. We just haven't really had the trust there, and Dan Campbell actually brought it up once this happened, saying, hey, you have guys MAing missing assignments. So Dan Campbell brought this up, remember going back weeks ago, got guys Guys out there that are missing assignments, missing blocks, not being where they're supposed to be in golf, can't trust him. And I think that's when we started to see this scheme shift. The scheme has shifted the last few weeks to what? It has shifted to Khalif Raymond really being the only outside threat that we have gone to. It's only been Khalif. And we saw it really in that Rams game specifically. It started to get going in that two-minute drill. We got a couple of shots to him where it was just quickly him getting off the release, getting some space, and we were able to connect with him. Now, we haven't been able to do that ton. Part of that is because of protection. But part of that is we started to kind of scheme away from that since Quintes Cephas has went down. Lacking some of the trust in the outside receiver position, the Detroit Lions have started to scheme two more screens underneath passes, catching and blocking, you know, just things underneath. And we started to run a lot more decoys where we're just running guys off to open up a TJ Hawkinson, where if you look at TJ Hawkinson in the first five weeks, he had 33 targets. In these last three weeks, he has 31 targets. In two less games, almost the same amount of targets. He's become such a big part of this offense where a lot of things offensively have been simply just designed to try to open him. Route combinations, not to try to get those shots because we aren't protecting long enough to get those shots anyways. These aren't shots that we were trying to make happen with Quintez C. No, we're running these to try to open up guys underneath like a TJ Hawkinson. We're running these screens underneath, and when we make blocks, it gets tough. So because of this scheme shift, now we're seeing defenses are just starting to say, okay, we're just going to slide a safety up into the box, and we're going to start taking away that run game. And now we're just getting all these combination of issues because now teams are sliding up. We saw it last week against Philly, and the two games that we've gotten blown out, we've seen Cincinnati and Philly both take away our run game. So they're selling out to now stop this run game, sliding a safety consistently down down into the box because we're not going to these outside guys. We're not taking these outside shots. As Dan Campbell says, just throw it there. Just trust that your guy wins one-on-one. -on -one. We weren't doing that. We weren't doing that. And like Dan Campbell said in his presser, in, in his media presser, golf will throw whatever we want him to do. So that's something that we just may have to game plan, run a design to get to him. So that was clearly the design. So defense started sliding up. They said, hey, we're going to take away this run game. And what we've seen is the two games that teams have shut down a run game the game hasn't been close offensively because they get us behind the chains, they get us the obvious passing downs, and right now we're not picking those up whatsoever. A big part of that has been protection, which really getting kind of highlighted, leading to issues because we're not trusting guys on the outside to make plays, to get open. We're rolling through different receivers. When they do get opportunities, they're not making plays. They're not picking up their blocks. So now coming off this bye week, I think the Lions are looking at it saying, okay, hey, how can we try to find some flow offensively? Well, how about we take a guy that we know Jared Goff trusts, and even though it's from the slot position, a guy that has had experience playing the outside role back at USC, why don't we take him and play him more on the outside and try to get another threat outside? 
have him across from Khalif Raymond, right? And then going back to some of those sets that we've seen him do in the past this season, right? We saw early near the lines did a lot more of this. We saw back with LA where you'd put seven, eight guys on the offensive line, multiple tight ends, one running back, more 21 personnel. You want more two tight ends, one running back sets, more two running backs. You're going to these heavier packages, less receivers, pulling out to help their protection, playing more max protect, right? Playing more backs in the backfield, more tight ends, having less receivers go out. But they're guys that we're trusting to get open, be where they need to be, make something happen after the play on a scramble drill the lions may start going back there and saying hey he trusts st brown he trusts khalif let's get those two guys playing more on the outside and at slot maybe benson gets some reps there this does mean st brown will always take these outside snaps but to get him a little bit involved there can hopefully try to open back up this offense because we've dealt with it tyrell's out right Perriman got cut cephas is out so these outside guys that we're stepping up they're not here anymore they're injured so the lions are going to try to adjust and that's one thing that i at least like is that the lions are adjusting as you can see from this play, this is against the Bears early in the season. Cephas is playing outside. Now, we only have one receiver on the outside. You have Khalif slid in here. So what we're seeing now is teams like Philly, they're sliding this safety completely into the box. They're playing him like a linebacker. Well, back early in the season, teams weren't doing that because they had respect for our outside receivers because we were showing trust to throw to them. We're not respecting our outside receivers, so why should other teams? And like I said, our protection issues have been really highlighted because now teams are selling out to stop the run and they're beating us with four. And before we were trusting guys quick slants, things that could at least make the defense respect that you're passing it and running it. There was a respect factor there. Things weren't selling out like they are now, and it helps our protection a little bit. These last few weeks have been highlighted as bad. We've allowed 91 pressures already. Eight games, 91 pressures. Let me tell you how bad that is. We're on pace to allow 193 pressures. To put that in perspective, the last season, in one less game, of course, we allowed 122. That's like 70 less. That's 71 less pressures than we're on pace to allow this season. 71. All right, here's another number to put this in perspective. We're allowing on average 11.3 pressures per game. The LA Rams are allowing 3.9 pressures per game heading into this last week against the Titans. All right, now Titans started to get after and we saw their offense struggle. Pressure is a killer, all right? And it has been killing us. And you can see from those statistics just how much pressure we've been under. Moving to a scheme to decoy, to just play things underneath, anytime we get a penalty, anything that pushes us behind the chains is taking us and killing our offensive drives because we're not able to stay on schedule. And as we know, once we get into third and long, second and long, usually we're not picking up a first down. So this offense has pretty much just become go to the guys you trust. That's Hawk or it's Khalif. It's mainly been Hawk. It's hurting our pass pro because our run game is less effective because teams are selling out to stop the run. So our pass pro gets worse because they know you're passing the football. And now you're trying to play more receivers to try to decoy when before you could trust two to three guys to get open. Now we're running multiple receivers, not even to try to get open. We're running multiple receivers just to try to open up one guy to decoy because now we're not trusting any of our outside receivers to win aside from Khalif. That's it. So it has really been hurting us because now everything is starting to pile on top of each other. So this light and slight adjustment could help. Another thing that could help is getting Taylor Decker back. Yeah, Matt Nelson has been bad. I ain't going to go all into it. He's been bad. There's no other way to put it. He's been bad all season. So getting a guy like Decker back, who's a top tier pass protector, yeah, that should help. And I've said it for a while. First time we get Decker back, we score at least 24 points. I'm going to stick with that. We'll see if it's true or not. I don't know if it's going to be true, but I'm going to stick with it. My point is he will definitely help. So you combine that, which Dan Campbell said he's got that look in his eye. He may play this week with possibly help moving St. Brown to more outside receiver, having more trust in your outside guys, and now just simply saying, let's just trust him one-on-ones. It could lead to more interceptions, but it's also a different scheme thing. It's just, hey, we're going to take shots. It's not all that lines are just avoiding shots. It's that schematically, their shift ha they have shifted. They've went from a team that's trusting their outside guys, doing this and that, to all of a sudden, they're playing their offense to just run off players. They're playing more receivers to try to open up other guys. Their offense is based on underneath screens, things like that, because that's what they feel like they have. I wish they would have made probably an adjustment sooner. I talked about maybe going and trading for a receiver. That could have helped. But instead, the Lions didn't go and make a trade. They didn't go sign a receiver. So now they have to work with what you got. And what you got is St. Brown. And St. Brown is a guy that they trust, that golf trust, and he's played outside. So at least maybe he could help. I wish they would have made some adjustment to keep St. Brown more in the slot because I think that's where he's at his best. But you have to do something. If you're not going to bring anybody in, you can't keep throwing the same product out there. And I think this could help. Okay, just simply, and I'll just put these quick numbers. If you look at the passer ratings to guys we've thrown to, you look at Kittero Hodge, we've thrown to him, we've had a 23.2 pass rating. 23.2. 
That's not good. You look at a guy like Drama Allison, we throw to him, 39.6. That's not good. It hasn't been a ton, but that's not good. All right, compare that to Cephas, who when we threw it to him, a 127.8 pass rating. A 127.8 pass rating when we targeted Quintess Cephas. All right, a guy that really just no one thought was the number one coming in this year, but he's just like, hey, back up. Let me do my thing. All right, this isn't a huge name. Khalif has had a 107.7 pass rating when he's thrown it his way. Our underrated thing this could do is while we may see less receiver play and more tight ends trying to be involved in this with Brock Wright and Hawkinson, maybe more 21 personnel, more two tight ends, more things like this where we start getting heavier on the line, just trusting our guys to win one-on-ones. We also are going to get two receivers in St. Brown and Khalif that block well. Like, that's one thing that Hodgewood and Benson, they weren't giving us. They weren't blocking well. They were missing blocks. And also in the pass game. And they haven't shown in the weeks they've been in that they will block. And they will be effective blockers. St. Brown and Khalifas will block. And they're effective on screens, on plays. They're guys that have helped us. We could run swing passes their way. We could run two receivers on one side, just Khalif on the outside, St. Brown to slot, and just run that out of the gun. Two tight ends, one running back, flip it to your running back, run a swing pass. We couldn't do that with the other receivers. Now we may be able to do that a little bit more because you're letting those two guys block. This is probably not a long-term solution, but at least for what you have, you have to try something different, and hopefully this can possibly give a spark to the Lions offense in the second half of the season. We'll see. I know Decker is going to help big time and it could open up some different things that maybe we haven't even seen this year offensively. But I think this slight change is, is just one of those big changes. And one thing that I know about this Lions coaching staff is when they say something could be coming, it's coming. It's coming because they've done this many times this year and we've seen the adjustments. Whether it works or not, they're trying something new. And I expect to see that this week. That's why I said Kennedy being waived is probably part of this. We don't need as many receivers anymore. All right, because we're going to just say St. Brown play more outside for us. We're playing these tight ends, Brock Wright and Hogg at the same time. And uh, yeah, this is how we're going to do it. You trust your outside guys, we're going to start getting them involved. In his last couple weeks, we just played them as decoys. Now you're going to be involved. Going with these guys, guys that we trust to block, trust to get open, and we're going to let them play and see how this offense flows. And uh, yeah, we may see a little bit more of early season lines versus what we saw with hopefully better pass protection from Decker because that'll change a lot. Let me know your thoughts, comments below. This should hopefully open up the run game. Thank you, Pat, for watching, and I'm out.